Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Elliptic Curves. So um, we have some uh, very exciting uh, applications of the VA pairing today for you. Uh, so remember that we've talked about uh, how we have biostress models for elliptic curves, that we have isogenies, the dual isogeny, that those will show up today in class. Then we constructed the Tate module and we talked a little bit about it. Uh, out of uh, the Tate modules, so the Tate module for Q, um, we saw that there is attached to it, there is a representation uh, that we called uh, chi P infinity uh, from the absolute Galois group of Q to uh, CP cross, uh, which comes from the action of Galois on, uh, on roots of unity, on P power roots of unity. Okay, and that was in the lecture about the Tate module. We constructed that Galois representation is a one dimensional ZP Galois representation. And then out of the action of, so here was, there was, this was all thanks to the action of Galois on the Tate module. There is also an actual, an action of Galois on the Tate module attached to an elliptic curve. And out of that, I constructed a representation rho EP infinity. Uh, from, uh, well, I guess over Q, if the elliptic curve was defined over Q, but let, let's say that um, for now. Two, uh, the automorphisms of the Tate module, which is ZP, uh, the Tate module is isomorphic to ZP cross ZP, so the automorphisms is GL2. Okay. So one application that we're going to do is that if I uh, take the determinant of this representation, I mentioned during the lecture on the Tate module, that actually I get the cyclotomic character. Uh, and we're going to prove that using the Vey pairing. So uh, what we proved last time is uh, the existence of the Vey pairing. So we constructed a pairing, uh, which is called uh, the Vey pairing. Uh, that goes from uh, M torsion to M torsion, from M torsion cross M torsion to, to torsion to M torsion, but on, on Q bar at this time, um, and that uh, it has several properties. We we defined it, and remember, there is a, it's quite a complicated construction, but then 99% uh, of the time, all you're going to need about the Tate module, uh, or about the Vey pairing, rather, in the future is just it exists and it has these properties. And just by its existence, you can prove uh, things using the properties of it. So here is the, the construction, but the important part, as I said, is in the, uh, the properties, which we also proved last time. That is bilinear, alternating, non-degenerate, Galois invariant, and compatible. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start with some applications. The first application is the following. So um, let K be a field, let E over K be an elliptic curve and M bigger or equal to two. Uh, we define the field of definition of the M torsion. So uh, this is just a joint to K, all the X coordinates and Y coordinates of points of M torsion that we call the M division field. Division field because it divides zero. Um, so there are points that are make zero divisible by M essentially, so points that M times those points give you zero, or simply the field of definition of the M torsion. Uh, and then uh, two things we're gonna prove. First of all, in the uh, the definition of the V pairing, so if you go back to uh, the theorem about the V pairing, it just said that the image lands in mth roots of unity, but it doesn't say that this map is surjective. So we're going to prove that this is surjective. We get all the mth roots of unity. And second, uh, we're going to use the Galois invariance to show that if the entire mth division field is defined over k, so that means that uh, this implies, for example, that if you try to compute uh, the rational points on, ellipt on the elliptic curve over K, since the, since the coordinates of every M torsion point is defined over K, 
then what that says is that the m torsion is defined uh, over k, okay, the full m torsion. But it turns out that this theorem or this corollary of the wave hammering says that if that happens, then the nth roots of unity are in the base field. And that's a big restriction. For example, if you think about number fields over Q, we only have two roots of unity plus or minus one. Okay, so um, so let me let me prove this. So uh, first of all, um, consider. So this is uh, first for part A. Uh, consider the image of the vape pairing. Uh, each one of those is a root of unity and it is contained in mu m right not only contained because of the properties because the pairing is bilinear this is going to be a subgroup and therefore uh, because it is a subgroup, the subgroups of m roots of unity are other subgroups of roots of unity. The subgroups of the roots of unity are just um, lower degree roots of unity, if anything. Okay, so this such a subgroup then it has to be some mu d for some d dividing m. And what I want to prove is that actually d equals m that. I do get all the m roots of unity. All right. So suppose, Sorry, yeah. Professor, can I ask you an yep. elementary question? Yeah. Um, what is the the multiplication structure of on k adjoin or uh, k adjoin e of m? Oh, it is not. It's just a number field. Uh, so I mean, if you take k to be a number field, then k adjoin the mth torsion. Is going to be a number field. Um, Isn't it two dimensional though? Is a, a, a vector space over K? Uh, or well, sorry, it, like it I'm, vector, I'm... It is, you can consider it as a vector space over K in, in, in general as a vector space over K will be um, depends on um, that. That's a very good question. It's it's there's a lot of work to be done on, in that direction. How big of an extension you get, but you get a finite extension of K. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so in general, let me, let me put an aside here. In general, uh, you will have that, um, that this is an extension is a, uh, an extension. And, um, it turns out that, um, of degree. Precisely because the automorphism group of that extension um, is the largest it can be is GL2 of Z mod MZ mm -hmm. of degree, uh, the size of GL2 Z mod MZ, uh, whatever that is. Okay, but it is not a two dimensional. I'm not sure how you're thinking about it. This is just, I'm not joining numbers, right? The X coordinate and the Y coordinate. Are elements uh, of K cross. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, I understand now. Yep. So this is in K uh, in K bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. Remember that uh, the M torsion, the multiplication by M is an isogeny, is defined by polynomials. So the points that are in there are algebraic over K. So the X coordinate and the Y coordinate are algebraic over K. And I can adjoin all of them and then I get some larger extension of uh, of K, uh, mm -hmm. but it turns out to be a finite extension um, of degree at most that and and well we saw there are results that we've already seen that can be interpreted as about um, how often is it all of GL2 for example, but uh, most of the times you should get that the degree is all of, uh, as big as GL2. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, very good. So, um, right. So we have that the image of the vape pairing is going to be some subgroup. Suppose it's uh, a subgroup of roots of unity, which are subgroup of roots of unity are roots of unity of order dividing M. 
um, and then, um, well, that implies suppose they, then if they are all roots of unity of degree dividing D, then I always have that the image to the Dth power will be one always, okay? But by uh, by linearity, that can actually come if you imagine this is EMST D times multiplied together, then by, by linearity, I can bring that D inside multiplying S, for example. Okay, so here I've used the by linearity of the V pairing. And, um, and this would be true uh, for all. So, so if you fix, if you fix S and uh, this is true for all T, but the map is non-degenerate and that means that uh, D times S would be O. Uh, now I've fixed S, but is arbitrary. Uh, so this is true for all S. Uh, D times S is O. But S was a point of M torsion, and there are points that are of M torsion uh, that is exact order M. Uh, but if uh, S is of exact order M, which there are such elements. Then uh, th these must tell us that uh, D equals M. Okay, I cannot annihilate a point of exact order M with any D that is strictly, strictly less than M. Great. Um, and then uh, let's, uh, so th this proves part A. Okay, so this is half a box of a proof. So for part B, I want to prove that the m roots of infinity are in K cross. So uh, I want to show that um, if the full m division field is in K, then the m roots of unity are in K. Um, so now by Galois invariance, let's see what happens if I act on a uh, root of unity uh, by Galois invariance of the V pairing, this, uh, the action of Galois uh, goes, uh, so it's, this is for a sigma in uh, for any sigma in the absolute Galois group of K, so an automorphism of K bar, uh, the sigma can go inside acting on S and T. But if the M torsion is defined over K, uh, then sigma of S must be S and sigma of T must be T because um, the automorphisms act trivially on K. Those are automorphisms that fix K and the points are defined over K, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate is defined over K, so it fixes the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, so it fixes the points. Uh, and therefore, this is EM of ST and uh, what I just showed is that, well, if this was um, a root of unity zeta, then zeta sigma equals zeta for all sigma in the absolute Galois group of K. But now I've proved in part A that the image is all of mu M, so pick uh, uh, S and T such that this is a primitive M through of unity. If we pick S and T judiciously so that zeta is a primitive M through of unity, which 
I can do that by part A, then tells me this tells me that um, again the same property of the Galois group, the elements that are fixed by every element of Galois, by Galois theory, are in the base field, and every element of the base field is fixed by ele every element of Galois. Okay, so that's by uh, Galois theory. Uh, this tells me that uh, zeta is in the base field in K. And therefore, if a primitive one is in the base field, all others are powers of this one, so all of them are in the base field. Okay? They're units, so they are in the unit group. Right? So that's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, this is in the classification of what uh, what rational points I can have in a um, on an elliptic curve over a field K. This is huge. This gives me a, a big constraint about the torsion subgroup. So um, the the fact that so again. They, well, this fact is right here, so I'm just not going to repeat it. This is a very strong condition. For example, um, for example, over Q, if I have m roots of unity in Q, uh, that implies that m is uh, one or two, right? So if the entire m torsion subgroup is inside uh, a, a group of rational points of an elliptic curve so um so suppose that you have an elliptic curve over q And such that the M torsion is defined over Q, then M is one or two. So I can have the two torsion defined over Q, but that's it. I cannot have elliptic curves over Q with the three torsion, the full three torsion defined over Q. So for example, uh, Y squared equals X cubed minus X. We've seen uh, that the two torsion is actually given by O. That is not of order two, that's order one. And then the points of order two are zero, zero, one, zero, and minus one, zero is fully defined over Q. Okay. Um, if you have, if you want to see three torsion defined over the base field, then you have to go to at least a quadratic field. So um, if you want to see an elliptic curve, so if uh, E3 is contained in some uh, group of units, a group of points, then Q adjoint, uh, uh, oh, let me, let me, I wanted to do instead of that, uh, I wanted to do the four torsion. If the four torsion is defined over uh, the base field, then we must have that Q adjoint I is inside K. Okay, uh, or with this a number field. And then we must have that at least Q adjoint I is defined over k. So let me give you an example. So for example, uh, take uh, the elliptic curve uh, E over Q adjoint I given by uh, y squared plus xy plus y equals x cubed um, plus x squared uh, minus 10x minus 10. And um, that elliptic curve is actually defined over Q, but I'm thinking about it as defined over Q adjoint I. It turns out that in this case, uh, the four torsion 
is generated by two points of order four, a point uh, minus two minus two, and a point minus seven, three minus 15i. Okay. Um, so you see that uh, the four torsion is defined over Q at join I. I. I just need I to be able to define a second four torsion point. There is a four torsion point. So you see that this is defined over Q. So there is a point of order four defined over Q, but not a point, not all the four torsion is defined over Q. If you go to the LMFDB database, um, I have a full video about the LMFDB database that I uh, I made for CTNT at some point. Um, so if if you want to learn about the LMFD, LMFDB, um, you can go to that video. But in any case, in the LMFDB, there is actually information uh, which uh, people like Enrique Gonzalez Jimenez, one of my collaborators, put together for the LMFDB with other collaborators. Uh, they've done a lot of work on what happens uh, in what extensions you get extra torsion. So, for example, if you go to the page for that elliptic curve, it will show you that after a quadratic extension, you gain all of the four torsion. You gain all of the two torsion and you get all of the four torsion at the same time when you go to Q adjoin I. All right. Um, actually, I think, uh, I think that full two torsion is defined over Q in this case. All right. Um, what else? One theorem or proposition that I'm not going to prove is what happened between the they pairing and isogenies. It turns out they talk to each other very nicely. So uh, let S be a point of M torsion on, on a curve E1 and T be a point of M torsion on a point in a curve E2. And uh, suppose we have an isogeny. Uh, from E1 to E2, then. What happens with uh, what what happens if I try to do um, this? So on on E one a half s, and I can come up with another point of order m by using the uh, the dual isogeny. Remember, there is another isogeny. If I have phi, I have a dual isogeny going the other way, and I want to know. What happens if I pair S with the preimage of T via the dual isogeny? Well, it turns out that this is um, phi of S comma T. So the they pairing behaves the same way on both sides. It's just a matter of translating the points via the isogeny. Okay. So what this means is in a in language of of uh, bilinear forms is that uh, phi and phi hat the dual isogeny are dual uh, a joint uh, with respect to uh, the ve pairing okay I'm not going to prove that um, now another property is what happens, so we've defined the very pairing for M torsion. Can I define this for the, uh, for the Tate module? Well, um, I'm going, to, I'm thinking here about the Tate module the piatic Tate module, though I can actually think about it as uh, the Adalic Tate module, and it would work also. But let's uh, uh, let's just think piatically. So uh, 
what I have is that for every n, for every power of p, I have a V pairing that goes to p to the nth roots of unity. And uh, the V pairing has the compatibility condition, which is really nice because it implies uh, the following. It satisfies the following property. If I work on p to the n plus one uh, torsion, so S and T here are of order p to the n plus one, and I raise it to the p power, then this is going to be the same that e to the p to the n plus one as uh, p t, and this is just by uh, by linearity, by linearity, and then also by compatibility this is the same that whoops p s uh, p t this is the compatibility condition it's compatible okay um so what this is telling me is that if I look at the image of the p to the n plus one uh, vape pairing, raise it to the p power, I get the image of the p to the nth vape pairing. That is exactly a condition you need for the inverse limit to work out. So what that means in other words is that I have, um, let me put this maybe on the left hand side so I can use the right hand side later. So I have a diagram like this that through the vape pairing goes here. I can uh, raise to the p power and come down here. So this goes like this. And then I can also uh, map down by multiplication by p maps down to the p to the nth power uh, torsion subgroup and then use the v pairing over there and what i just wrote above what it says is that this diagram commutes and that allows me to define uh, a v pairing on the Tate module. Okay, the, remember the Tate module is just sort of like infinite chains of elements of p uh, higher p power order with the condition that when you multiply by p, you get the previous one. And um, and uh, the, the Vey pairing level by level is compatible to allow me to uh, just operate on the entire tower of the Tate module. So I can define like this, and actually, because um, what we just saw also is that on the level of root of unity acts like multiplication, or like the p power, I can also map to the Tate module of Q. So this is uh, bilinear, inherits all the nice properties of the Vey pairing at the level of m torsion is bilinear, alternating, uh, non-degenerate, uh, Galois invariant uh, pairing. Now the compatibility is gone because now the compatibility was was to build this, and it actually uh, it is still a joint for the uh, the the isogenies are a join uh, for the pairing in the sense above that E uh, of S phi hat T is E of phi S uh, T, where now S and T are elements of the Tate module. Okay. So um, I've defined a vape pairing in the entire Tate module, and that's nice because I can use that 
for my uh, last um, result here, which is the following. So let E over K be an elliptic curve. Uh, and let uh, P be a prime. Let, uh, we have two, uh, two different uh, representations that we built. Uh, I have a row of E P infinity that goes from, remember the Galois group of, oops, in this case, just K bar over K. to uh, GL2 uh, ZP. And I also have chi P infinity that goes from uh, the absolute Galois group to ZP cross, okay? Um, such that, remember that uh, rho E P infinity of sigma, what it does is uh, it's an automorphism that sends a point P to sigma of P. So this automorphism, so these are automorphisms of the Tate module, and these are automorphisms of the Tate module of Q. Uh, rho sends P to uh, sigma P, okay? And in GL2, when the image is GL2, is just with respect to a basis. So it's actually going to be a matrix of what it does with respect to a basis. And, uh, and chi of sigma sends uh, sigma is the automorphism that sends sigma to uh, this other root of unity. But now as a ZP unit, is telling me what is the power that I have to raise my roots of unity to for this automorphism. Every automorphism is raise every root of unity to a power. And the ZP expansion is telling me what happens for every P power order. Well, then there is one more uh, representation that you can build, which is the determinant of rho E P infinity. And the determinant turns out to be exactly the power that you need to raise uh, root of unity to to get uh, that automorphism. So the determinant of the representation on the Tate module is the representation on roots of unity. Okay, so let's prove that. So here's the proof. And notice that there is no mention of the uh, vape pairing, right? There is the statement is vape pairing free, but we're going to use the vape pairing to prove this uh, in a in a huge way. So let's uh, once and for all let's pick a basis of the Tate module. The Tate module is going to be generated by P and Q over ZP. Okay, so these are two generators, and here by P, I mean entire expansion of P1, P2, P3, P4, and so on, uh, such that P times Pn and P to Pn plus one gives me the nth point. All right, and uh, with respect to that basis, let's suppose that um, rho E P infinity of sigma is given by a matrix A, B, C, D in GL2 ZP. Okay. What that means is that, um, so this is where P is sent to, right? This column tells you that P is sent to, through sigma is sent to, uh, P is sent to A, P plus C, Q and Q is sent to BP plus DQ. That's just how linear algebra works. In this case, module theory works, okay? But that's 
the a representation as a matrix of a, of a homomorphism. All right, then let's see. Uh, here comes the Vey pairing to the rescue. I want to know. I want to know what root of unity I get when I send through the Vey pairing P and Q. Actually, I do not need to know what root of unity uh, that is. What I'm going to see is how Galois acts on this root of unity. Um, Galois acts. So if I try to act with a sigma, that sigma, the same sigma as above, what that tells me the representation chi tells me that um, it acts as raised that as that root of unity to a power, and the power is um, chi p infinity. of sigma. Okay. Um, great. But well, again, that um, that power. Okay. On the other hand, uh, the Vey pairing is Galois compatible. This is the same as this, right? The sigma can go inside the Vey pairing. Now, I know how sigma acts on P because I told you how it acts. I have a matrix right here that tells me how Galois acts on it. So I can write that as E A P plus C Q comma B P plus D Q. There you go. And, um, and now I know that the Vey pairing is bilinear, so I can break this all up. Um, so let's put together P and P. So this is going to be P on P uh, to the power AB times EPQ to the power AD. Uh, and just remember that the Vey pairing does not commute exactly, it's alternating, so it would like flip the, the sign. So I'm also going to need to know what happens on Q and P. Q and P, I get C or BC. Here, BC and CB are the same. This is just multiplication of integers. Um, and EQQ, uh, which is uh, CD to the power CD. But now, I know that um, the Vey pairing on itself, so on PP and QQ, those are U1. Okay, so what I get is E P Q A D times. I'm going to flip so I can talk about it. E Q P is E P Q to the minus one. So this is E P Q to the minus B C. And this is E P Q to the A D minus B C. And we're done. Because what this is saying, if you if you trace uh, what we've done, is that the number that I have to raise my root of unity to to get the action of sigma is this number, is A D minus B C which lo and behold is the determinant of that matrix. Okay, so uh, this whole thing implies that um, the determinant of rho E P infinity sigma, which by the way, does not depend on the choice of basis that I made originally, the determinant is an invariant, is precisely the number chi p infinity sigma for all sigma. And that tells me that the two representations are exactly the same. Boom. So those two things coincide. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry yeah. if you already asked this, or I'm sorry, answered this. Um, so, how should we understand the multiplication by um, 
like a map or multiplication by c map when we're talking about p adic integers oh you yeah so you, you multiply coordinate by coordinate so mm -hmm. uh, when you have uh let me just not do a, a time right tiny in a corner uh if i have a point say q uh in the tape module uh then what that means is that Q is really a sequence like that, right? Uh, QN such that each QI is in um, the P to the I torsion and uh, QN plus one, um, give me some room and P times Q N plus one is Q N. So uh, multiplication by A on Q is uh, multiplication by A on each coordinate. If, um, if Q N is a point of order P to the N, A times Q N will also be a point of order P to the N right p to the n times a q n will be the same the multiplication by the multiplication by n maps commute so this is a times p to the n q n uh, which is a times o which is o so this tells me that a q to the n is still in the right place And uh, we also need to check that it's compatible. The new sequence is compatible in the Tate module, right? What I want is, is this is still in the Tate module and I'm checking both conditions of the new sequence. And then uh, what happens if I multiply by P, uh, A, Q, N plus one. Well, that's again, is going to commute multiplication by a multiplication by p and that is a times qn so um they're all p to the n torsion and the n plus one coefficient maps down to the p to the nth coefficient so that that works so that that's all we mean by multiplying a piatic uh element of the tate module by a number Okay, so that also and, and in that... this case, uh, sorry, uh, no, you can actually a could be a piatic integer, right? Because now also the compatibility condition would actually work that I could multiply each coordinate by uh, instead of just a, I could multiply by a one, a two, a three, and then the compatibility or condition of the congruences would actually also help me and work. That's why it's a piatic uh, module uh, and not just a Z module. Sorry, you, you were gonna say. That's, that was my question, that answered it. Thank you so much. Yep, all right, very good. So I'm going to stop here and then uh, I'm going to continue next video. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about elliptic or finite fields, not a lot, but some.